On today's episode, we're going to go to the Goodwill bins, and I only spent $16 today, but got quite a few really great things, and I'm also going to show you how I flipped them as well. If you're new to my channel, my name is Corey. My husband Manny and I have four kids, and we are starting a journey on reselling thrifted items and decorating our own home for super cheap. So if you're interested in that, hit subscribe to see more of our videos. Another shopping day, going to the bins. This location is usually really great. I usually get a full cart like overflowing and I usually spend around 60 to $70, but today I only spent 16. There wasn't a whole lot of bins that had home decor in them, so I didn't get a massive haul. So today I wanna make sure that I show you exactly how I flipped the pieces that I got since I'm not gonna have a massive haul. And you guys have been telling me that you really enjoy the videos where I show you what I thrifted, take you with me shopping, and then show you at the end how I flipped those things. So if that is something that you wanna see more of, let me know in the comments section down below. Or you can let me know if you'd rather separate the video to where I just show you big shopping hauls, going shopping with me at several different stores, and then showing you what I got, and then the following video being all of my flips. So let me know, would you rather have shopping and flipping in the same video, or would you rather have separate videos of shopping and hauls, and then another video of how I flipped the things all together. But all of these things that I'm doing are either for decorating my own home, this toy is for my son, or I use it to resell in my booth. We're also going to be opening an Etsy store. There have been quite a few people asking to buy some of the things that I've shown on here. And I also wanna mention that I forgot to bring gloves this day, so that was super gross. As you can see, there's like a big old wig right there. <laughs> I don't know. You never know what's gonna be in there, so definitely wear gloves whenever you go to the bins. I am just really dumb today and forgot to bring <laughs> my gloves. But I have that mom brain, you know, that my memory is fading from me. <laughs> I did find a lot of cool little fruits in here, but most of them were pretty damaged, actually. So I only ended up taking home one. While you're watching me shop through all of these bins, let me know if I missed anything. So if you see something in the video that you think is like, amazing I should have got it or I didn't even see it and touch it let me know in the comment section because since we are new to doing this I don't know everything out there that is valuable to resell but my husband's going to school full-time and we really need to up our income with our business of reselling and doing YouTube so if you see something that is super valuable that I missed definitely let us know because we're still learning and I'm here to teach you what I learn as well. So if you're thinking of reselling, I often give lots of advice from <laughs> learning from my own mistakes and telling you guys what's working for me and what's not in my retail booth. And I also just really love decorating my own home. So if you're not super into decorating for a retail booth or flipping for retail and you just want to decorate based off of things that inspire you from watching DIY videos then I also do a ton of that as well so the best of both worlds <laughs> and if you enjoy that make sure that you hit subscribe so that you don't miss out I post videos every Wednesday and Sunday and I always do a premiere chat where I like to talk with all of my viewers and hang out and hear about what you guys are working on and just learn how your family's doing and what you've been up to I just absolutely love that time getting to talk to my viewers but now we're just gonna keep on shopping and then later I'll show you how I flipped all the things that I found. I made it out with a bunch of baskets 
Didn't get that much stuff, but I'm gonna see if we have time to try a different Goodwill outlet today. I didn't get to go to another Goodwill bins because it was too far away and we just had too many time constraints, but two crazy things happened while I was in there. The first thing is a lady stole my cart. <laughs> that was a first. That has never happened to me before. Um, it was empty, so she may have thought like somebody left it there, but honestly, nobody's just gonna like put a cart somewhere in the Goodwill bins. It's gonna belong to somebody because there's a very limited amount of carts. So I think she knowingly stole it from me. <laughs> but either way, I stole it back. <laughs> she had it parked and I, well, I like turned around to go grab my cart to put my stuff in it and my cart was gone. And then I remembered exactly which cart I had because I picked a really good one today. I got really lucky. But I looked ahead of me and like two people ahead of me on the bins was this lady and my cart next to her. And I was like, okay. And so I just walked up and grabbed my cart back and didn't say anything and then she walked and went and got her own cart but what the heck that was a first for me but the second thing that happened was I found a Chanel wallet I don't know 100% sure um, if it's authentic but I think it actually is authentic because I did a Google image search of it and then I also googled like how to tell if it's authentic and so far it seems like it is and it's selling for like a thousand dollars used on Poshmark and like $500 here and there. It's not in the greatest condition, but I'm gonna try and do some leather conditioner on it and see if that helps. But either way, I think it was a pretty good day <laughs> other than getting my cart robbed um, and not getting a whole bunch of stuff. They just didn't have a lot of home decor stuff today, but I did get some good stuff. And so today's video is actually gonna be a shop and flip with me video. I'm going to show you what I got in the haul from the Goodwill bins. The first thing is I got a set of four ginger jar pillow covers. Oh, that's upside down. These are from Amazon, and I know that because I had wanted to buy them off Amazon a while ago. But check that out. There's one. There's another one. Seems like the... <laughs> there we go. And then the last one. How pretty. I can see why somebody maybe got rid of these because they're like a canvas material. But they look good on camera, that's for sure. Um, I don't know, they don't look bad to me and they're brand new. So I'm going to wash these up and then uh, put them on some of my pillows in my formal living room. Next, I have this basket right here. It's pretty dirty inside. Let me see if I can get some more lighting. There we go. It's pretty dirty inside, but it's a really cool shape. It's not that squishy. So like it's more firm than it may look by its shape. And I think this would look really good as porch decor with some big florals coming out of the top, especially for springtime, like Easter, Valentine's, all that pretty time. And you can change it out for the seasons and put fall stuff in there. But I think because of the opening, it has kind of a vase shape for flowers. And I thought that would be really cute. Another basket. <laughs> I got a lot of baskets today, actually. So I think this would look really cute hanging on a door or on a wall with some greenery spilling out of it. I really don't think I need to do anything to this but clean it. So I'll hose this off with all the baskets at once. I also picked up a lemon. <laughs> you know I love lemon stuff. But I just figured... I'd throw it in the cart because it's you're paying by the weight so this cost me pretty much nothing the next basket I got is a big huge Easter basket I was almost not gonna get it because of this broken spot but I think that I can tuck it back in and glue it where it belongs because it's not broken like all the way down it's just not tucked and glued where it used to be so I think I'm gonna leave this in the color that it is and tie a beautiful ribbon around the handle. My next item is this corbel. It is kind of dirty and a little bit gross. There's some spider webs and grossness on there. It was from Hobby Lobby originally, 30 bucks, and somebody bought it on clearance for $7.50. I pay less than that. But I'm gonna paint this up and use it as a decor piece because there's only one and I think it would look good um, just 
on a shelf or a table with some other things that are tall lean next to it. I got this cute little coffee mug. It's like handmade. There's no maker's mark on the bottom or anything like that, but it has a beautiful design on it. I'm going to have to do a Google image search of this. It does have a chip in it, unfortunately, because it was from the bins, but I still think it was cute enough to get and use for decor. This will probably go in my shop but I will price it low because of the chip that it has, but I just couldn't leave it there and let it get thrown away. It's too cute. You can never have too many accordion wall hooks. Somebody tried to sell this at a yard sale for a dollar and it didn't sell. That it just blows my mind. It does have one of the balls a little bit chewed on, so I'm gonna have to sand that one, but I think it's really cute and it's a pretty green color. This will go up for sale in my booth. This little bowl is a Homer Laughlin china, like an ironstone almost. And I thought this might look cute on top of a pillar candle, like those tapered candles, I think they're called, uh, a candle holder. But I think that this would be cool to put on top of something or add to something. Or, I mean, it's cool by itself too. You can put rings in here or whatever you want to do. But this is going to be used for something going into my shop. Oh, you know what else? It would be a cute base for a larger something, too. This cute little cutting board just needs to be fixed up on here. I might paint it, actually, make it like a miniature riser or something. But I thought this was adorable and couldn't pass it up. Next, I have this Chanel wallet. I'm not sure still if it's authentic or not. The inside is in excellent condition. No, I didn't get lucky. There was no money in here. <laughs> <laughs> I checked all the pockets already, but I just noticed right now that the back side is in rough shape inside there, so that stinks. But I am going to try and polish it up because I've never owned anything Chanel, and I really do think this is real. It's a very soft leather. It doesn't feel fake. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do about this, but... I mean, there's a really good chance it's fake. What do you think? This part is kind of all scratched up. I don't know. I don't know. What would you do? Would you keep it just to have something that's Chanel? Or would you toss it? I don't know. Last, I have this basket right here. I think this basket is perfect as it is. There is literally nothing wrong with it. Oh, it says something underneath. Uh, Longa Burger Baskets Hand Woven in Ohio, Dresden, Ohio, and it was made in 1991, and it looks brand new. This thing is almost as old as me, and it looks brand new. I don't look brand new, <laughs> but this basket looks brand new. Holy cow. It does have a little bit of spider webs on there that need to get cleaned up, but wow. I, I can't believe how new this looks for that old. Look inside. It's like brand spanking new. But this is going to go probably in my booth and I will stage it with maybe a ribbon around it or some florals inside. The first flip I'm going to do today is finally use this glass vase that I've had for a little while. I had originally wanted to use this base on it. You probably recognize this from my past videos, but that base was way too massive for this vase. So I thought this little cute bowl would be great for under there as well. And it was really gross and dirty since I bought it from the bins. So I made sure to give it a good wash, both pieces, before I put them together. I dried both pieces really well and I'm just going to use some E6000 glue to attach these. There is a trick that you can do where you use hot glue and E6000 in order to secure things really quickly, but I'm not in a hurry for this to cure so I'm just going to use the E6000 and let it sit for 24 hours. It was an extremely easy project and I think that it turned out really well and it was very strong. The glue bonded really, really well in case you were wondering about trying it yourself at home. And I love that you can see the Homer Laughlin maker's mark on the bottom of the bowl through the vase. 
And the ribbon I'm going to tie around it was $2.99, but I got it 40% off because, you know, Hobby Lobby always has everything on sale. Every once in a while, you just got to follow the sale patterns. These eggs I also got from Hobby Lobby, and they were not on sale yet just because it's a little too early, but I still think that was a good price. I'll show you how I stage everything more towards the end of the video. But the next project that I'm going to work on is this tiny little cutting board that I think is adorable. And there was really nothing wrong with it other than that red mark that it had on it. So I cleaned that off and now I'm going to glue on some of these little wooden beads. I was going to use that hot glue trick, but my hot glue gun was taking forever to heat up. So I just went with doing the E6000 only and gluing it on and just letting it sit for a little while before I started doing anything else to it. I'm not going to do a whole lot to this little tray because I think that it's it needs to just be simple because I need something neutral to when you have some risers like these you want them to be neutral because the thing you're putting on top of it is really what you want to be the star of the show and I love that this is so miniature and I feel like anything I were to do to it would just be covered by whatever I'm going to put on it. And so that's why I decided that the only thing I really wanted to do to this was put a little bit of paint wash on it to give it kind of like a white wax look, but I didn't have any white wax on me at the time. So I'm just barely putting it on there to help get rid of the yellow tone that was on there. It wasn't so bad. I've seen way worse <laughs> wood stains, but I just wanted it to be a little lighter and a little more antique looking. But here is how it looks, and it's kind of giving you an example of the scale of this piece. This is a large coffee mug that I got from the Magnolia store when we visited Waco many years ago. Actually, my husband bought it for me the first time he went when he was there for a job, and it turned out really nice. The next thing that I'm going to work on is this basket handle. So the rest of the basket is in perfect condition and I hosed all the baskets off and let them dry earlier. But I'm using the same glue E6000 and I'm going to tape it together so that it will dry really strong. But also because since the way that that thing was sticking up, it had a lot of um, tension um, when I went to put it with the glue. Like there's no glue that would have held it strong enough. Uh, without having some tape to brace it there just because of how much tension was in that stick. But I'm not worried about the tape showing because I am going to go over the handle using this twine. I actually bought this twine brand new with the plastic on it and everything from the Goodwill bins. So really you have to look deep in the bins and you can find tons of craft supplies that are brand new. Like you can find craft paper, you can find googly eyes i've bought googly eyes for my kids there and pipe cleaners and you can find all sorts of brand new unused craft supplies in the goodwill bins and that's something that you may not be thinking to look for but you definitely should be so i just wrapped this around across the entire top of the handle i did it a pretty big wide amount and something i'm going to show you that i learned actually from the marine corps is uh, to burn the little extra wispy pieces off of it. <laughs> in the Marine Corps, we called these Irish pennants. I don't know why, that's just a naval term that they used. But whenever we did uniform inspections, the Marine Corps is extremely old fashioned and um, very traditional. So their uniform inspections are very thorough. And if you have any strings anywhere, tiny little less than a quarter inch strings on there you can fail your uniform inspection so we learned to burn them off right before inspection <laughs> and it works really really well it's the fastest way to do it and it burns it all the way down to like where there's no string <laughs> any scissors wouldn't be able to get to cut it down far enough like it does when you just use a lighter and burn it down so let me know if you've ever heard of doing this before or if it's just something weird we did in the military <laughs> The next project I'm doing is this hanging basket. I actually didn't even realize it had that stripe down the center until I started painting it. I guess I wasn't being very observant, but I wasn't really a huge fan of that stripe and I wanted to go for more of a whitewashed um, antique look. And so I did it in that same mineral taupe color on the entire basket. And then I'm gonna go over it with some Annie Sloan's dark wax.
have this wax out, I'm going to start on the next basket as well. I washed it up really good, but it looks kind of boring. The, the tone of the basket was too plain for me, so I decided that doing some dark wax on here could really do it some good. So I'm just adding on some dark wax on the entire exterior of the basket. And let me warn you before you use any kind of waxes like these, they are oil-based products, so they stink to high heavens. So I did this as quickly as possible and then immediately put both these baskets outside to air out. And then while those were airing out, I started working on this corbel right here. It was all cleaned up now, but it looks really rough. <laughs> it's been through some things. It's seen some stuff, I think. It's got some stories to tell. But all I needed to do was paint the entire thing in one color. And I painted it in a very kind of chippy, antique, distressed way. I wasn't trying to get full coverage on everything. I wanted it to look old and like it had been aging over time after being painted. And it turned out really good. I really like how this one turned out. And I was kind of worried about that metal part looking, I don't know, just not how I wanted it. I thought it would maybe look kind of cheap or something like that since it's not all wood. But it actually turned out really well. Here's a little sneak peek of a way to stage some of the things that I've already done, although I will stage it a little further later in the video. The next project that I'm going to work on is this little accordion hook, and it had that chewed up ball on one of the hooks. So I'm just sanding it right now to get it as smooth as I can, and then I'm going to sand all of them just so that it looks like it was distressed, distressed equally amongst all of the hooks on there. While I was working on this, I had a really cool thought, which is what if I used this as legs for a tray? I'm going to see if I have any wood that I can use for that. I've never done this before and I've never seen it done before, although I'm sure somebody has done it and I just don't know about it. But I had this piece of wood that was in my closet in my craft room for a long time. I bought it when it was half off at Hobby Lobby, so I spent about six fifty dollars for it. And it's quite large. I would say it's like a 1x12 or maybe a 1x10. I would say probably 1x12 though. It was just a little bit too long, so I had to take it outside and cut a piece off to make it... The right length for how far out I wanted to stretch that uh, accordion hook thing and halfway through cutting it my battery died on my saw so I had to charge the battery and then do it later although I didn't record myself finishing cutting it but this is real life and I'm not here to hide my mistakes <laughs> but the next thing that I did was paint it since I like to do things all with the same paint on the same days that I'm doing things um, this is going to be the same color, that mineral gray color. And the reason that I do that is because then all these things will look really good staged together, whether that's in my own house or staged in my resale booth. And it also saves me time on having to get a bunch of different paintbrushes or keep washing the paintbrush to do a different color. But I am going to mix my own color right here. And this is going to be for a stencil that I put on that board. And the green that I had was just a, had a little bit too much yellow in it. And it didn't match the green that was on those accordion hooks. So I added that same gray color to it to help it go really well, like be really cohesive in the tones of the colors. So it has the green of the base, but also the gray of the board after I painted it. And I'm doing it in an extremely light watered down finish. So I put water in my sponge and squeeze the water out so that it was a damp sponge before I started painting and that gave it a more watered down kind of translucent effect on the paint. Now I need to put a clear coat on here. I'm just using a matte clear coat by Dixie Belle, although any clear coat would work. And even Mod Podge works as a sealer if you want to use Mod Podge and you don't have any 
clear coats on hand this is totally okay and just use what you have also i want to mention if these are not colors that you enjoy you can take this idea and do it however you want to do it for your decorations now i'm going to flip it over and screw this piece on and here is where i made my first mistake so the first thing I did wrong was just screw it directly in there. It ended up cracking the wood on that accordion wall hook thing. It didn't make a difference really for the structure because I had a bunch of screws in it, but I ended up getting my other drill and pre-drilling the rest of the holes to make sure that those got a really strong grip on the piece since the other ones did crack. But here's how it looks. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I feel like the wood looks a little bit too geometric. I should have maybe done curved edges on it. But then I flipped it over and I was like, oh, wow, that looks cool either way. So it kind of can, can be like reversible or two-sided and you can use it for different things. But now it's time to stage and decorate everything that I have made so far. This big basket and this corbel, I, I wanted to put the corbel inside the basket, but ended up being a little bit too big. So I'm just playing around here trying to figure out ways to decorate it. I bought this bunny secondhand used from another booth in the boutique where I sell my things. I got this decor ball from Goodwill for $1.99. And then the big greenery in my hand right there is from Walmart. I think it was like $3. And the rest of all the greenery came from the Goodwill bins. Anytime I see greenery in the Goodwill bins, that's good quality and has a lot of life left in it, I pick it up. Even if I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet, because I need it to stage all my things later. And greenery can be really expensive. This basket just needed a dusting and that was it. And I put this arrangement, this arrangement I found in the Goodwill bins as well. But I put that in there just to stage it for you. And my table wasn't very large. So I kind of had to be creative with how I staged all these things. But the basket turned out really cute with that antiquing wax on there. And then my daughter is actually off camera. I don't like showing my kids on YouTube. But um, she's off camera telling me how to do the arrangement in this basket. My oldest daughter is very good at floral arrangements. And she just recently discovered that she enjoys doing it. So a lot of times when I have to do arrangements for my booth or for a video, I have her tell me what to do because I think that it's great to um, help her express herself artistically, but also she's amazing at it. <laughs> she's probably better than I am at a lot of things. And she did a really good job creating this arrangement and then telling me how to recreate what she had already made. And I think it looks really good. So let me know in the comment section how do you think her arrangement turned out? These are all pieces from the Goodwill bins that I've picked up over the months that I've been doing this. This basket is another arrangement that my daughter actually did for me first. And then she told me what to do on camera to show you guys. So she bent that stem to the side for this big, I think it's like a pothos, pothos. How do you say pothos or pothos? <laughs> but she just put another one in there and these look really realistic. And I love how that turned out. It looks real. And I hung it up on my wall just to give you an idea of how it would look in your own home. But man, I lucked out finding these greenery pieces at the Goodwill bins because they would have probably been pretty expensive, especially with how realistic these look. And these are going to go up for sale in my booth. Now you can see where I'm staging that vase with the eggs in it. I think it would look really good with either farmhouse or cottage decor. Although most of this stuff is kind of in between either one <laughs> anyways. That's kind of my style. I like farmhouse and cottage stuff, and I also like French country. I really like traditional decorating, and I've done my house with those styles. I think today's thrift flips have turned out really amazing. Those pillow covers, don't forget about those pillow covers, they turned out really good, way better than I even thought. And I did look them up on Amazon because I remembered seeing them before and I found almost the exact same set. I think they just came out with one different cover than the ones that I have and they're $14.99, or $14 but I will link those in my description box on my Amazon store in case you want to buy these for yourself. I think that's really affordable. I probably only spent like $4 for all four. But this basket right here is going to go in my booth. I think it's just a stunning basket. It has so many different uses. So I think somebody's really going to love it. And then here I just have this big rooster that I got from an estate sale and that corbel together to show you kind of the scale or things that you can do with it. 
And then this Easter basket is just at the perfect time of year for me to be selling it in my booth. And I think it looks wonderful with that new handle that I created. Here's some outtakes to make you laugh. Piper, stop eating the grass. You're gonna throw up. While I was working on this, I had a really, <coughs> yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe. We have new videos out every Wednesday and Sunday, and I will see you next time. Bye!